Welcome to the GAC Weekly. I'm Joey McWilliams. The Oklahoma Baptist women's cross-country team competed in the national meet last Saturday and finished 16th overall. Kaylee Large Krausen led all Lady Bison runners, completing the 6K course in 2406.7 and finished 71st overall. The league's football teams didn't fare well last weekend in postseason play. For the second straight year in the playoffs, Washita was defeated by Ferris State. The number two Bulldogs took down the number four Tigers 37-14 in Arkadelphia. Washita finished the year at 12-1, the 12 wins being a school record. Additionally, kicker Cole Antley and offensive lineman Justin Gooseberry were named to the second team of the American Football Coaches Association All-America list. Monticello fell to Emporia State in a back-and-forth contest in the Corsicana Bowl. The Bull Weevils lost 30-22. And in the 6th Annual Live United Bowl, a late Southern Arkansas rally came up short against Missouri Western, and the Mule Riders lost 30-25. SAU's Devondrick Lyson was also listed as a second-team All-American by the AFCA. To basketball where league play is underway. Southwestern's women's team, the preseason GAC favorites, are living up to the billing in the early going. The Lady Dogs have won seven straight and are 2-0 in the GAC. On Saturday, Haley Tucker hit another milestone. The senior scored 25 in a big win over number 15 Lubbock Christian. In the process, Tucker passed UAM's Jordan Goforth to become the all-time leading scorer in GAC history. We had a chance to visit with Haley about the season so far. Haley, you've just crossed a milestone in Southwestern women's basketball history, but as we talk about that, let's talk about the game that got you to that point. An exciting win over a top 20 team in Lubbock Christian, 77-75. Uh, talk about what it means to win a game like that. You know, um, it means a lot. Uh, Lubbock Christian is a very well-coached team, very good team. Um, they're solid all around. They have some really great girls. Uh, and just, in, just to be able to get that win, especially being down 12 points with like seven minutes left or something, and then coming back and winning that game, I mean, that says a lot about our team and how um, how much maturity we've got now and how we've grown together as a team and we can stick together in those tough moments and finish out with a win. It's a team that has been growing in your time there over the course of your four seasons there. I know we're just three-plus seasons in right now, so it's not to the end just yet. Uh, but it is a team that has grown together, and you guys have some big goals, don't you? Oh, for sure. I mean, we talk about those goals every day. Um, and, you know, our goals, like my freshman year, uh, they weren't as big as they are now. And, um, I mean, our goal this year is ultimately, ultimately to win a national championship. I mean, that's... That should be on everyone's goal list that has the opportunity to be able to do that, and that's one of our big goals. I mean, also, um, of course, we want to win, win the regular season, win the GAC championship at the tournament, and then we also would love to host a regional tournament. Um, we have a great uh, Pioneer Cellular Vip Center here, a great gym, a great uh, crowd atmosphere, and so to be able to host that Central Region Tournament would be just amazing for us. Well, let's talk about the Pioneer Cellular Events Center, as you all have now won 22 consecutive games there. It sounds to me like it's home court advantage, too, along the way. Oh, for sure. I mean, um, with any homestead, you know, it's, you're going to just feel way more comfortable playing there. And um, like I said, we just have an amazing crowd, and we have amazing people that run the um, Pioneer Cellular Events Center and run our um, sports program here, and they just make it feel like – such like we have an advantage because of how the people here make us feel and so I, I just think it's a great thing well you've scored now more than 1800 points as we speak now with Haley Tucker from Southwestern more than 1800 points in a career that's a pretty good mark along the way how does it feel to, to have those kind of numbers already behind you as you are pushing toward at least the 2000 point plateau you know um that, I mean I, like I told um, some people this morning, uh, I feel very blessed and very honored to be able to do that. But um, I, I, I don't really want to pay attention to any of the individual accolades right now. Like my main goal right now is to, you know, ultimately win games and stuff. But yeah, um, I'd have a lot more points if I could, you know, make a three every once in a while. That would be awesome. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, it's just it's awesome that uh, my teammates and my coaches have put me in the position to be able to score that many points and do that for this university. You know, you say that as as uh, in your most recent outing. Let's go ahead and put this out on the table. Then. Oh, no. <laughs> 25 <laughs> points against Lubbock Christian. You had eight uh, two-pointers, eight of 13 going in. You missed all of your three-point opportunities over the course of the evening. So, yeah, I, I understand how you say that. But still nine for 10 from the free throw line. 
Yeah, you know, um, my coach doesn't see that. She sees a more uh, 0 for 9 from the 3, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, my philosophy has always been shoot or shoot till they make. And, you know, uh, they were giving us wide open threes. Like, it wasn't like I was taking forced rush threes or forced shots or anything like that. It was just they were in a zone. And I'm a shooter, and that's what I've always done is shoot the three ball. But on this particular night, it just was not falling. And so I'm just going <laughs> to agree that I just didn't shoot very well that night. Okay, well, now with that in mind, then, let's go ahead and, and say that free throws do matter also. 90% from the free throw line is not bad. Oh, yes, for sure. And that's been a, one of my big things this year is, you know, I, I want to walk up to that free throw line and I want people to think she's going to make that. There's no way she's missing them. And I have missed a couple this year that I'm like, gosh, I wish I could get that back, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the free throw line, it's free. So every every shot that goes up should be a make. You've had some pretty good teammates along the way, and I know that uh, you talk about them regularly when you talk about the things that you've been able to accomplish. And among those teammates, Hayden Pretty, who is – in your class, and, and I know you, you all have gone through Southwestern together, but she can not only shoot the ball, but she does get it into your hands with frequency. Yeah, I mean, she's just an overall amazing point guard. Um, she's a great distributor. Um, she just passed the plateau of uh, the all-time assist leader, leader here at Southwestern. I mean, I'm just so proud of her in the way that she has handled herself and everything. I mean, she gets probably the toughest assignment every night, having to handle the ball and um, get us into our fast-paced offense. I mean, that's not an easy job. Uh to be able to have a fast pace every night, night in and night out. I mean, her and Tabor Beer both have to push the ball. And, I mean, I'm just very proud of uh, Hayden and the way that she carries herself and handles herself. And the fact that she now is the all-time assist uh, career leader at Southwestern, I mean, that's just amazing that she's been able to do that in just a short four years. Well, three and a half years, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give, she's going she's gonna to build on that record. just like Oh, you. definitely, definitely, Pat. <laughs> You're going to build on your numbers as well. Now, I realize Kelly Litch's numbers are pretty tough to to get to so i understand that but you're building on your numbers as well there and and your legacy at southwestern two and oh now in conference play in the great american conference and as we wrap up our time together obviously 20 more uh, league games to go but you have still the first semester to wrap up a couple of gac games as well Uh, talk about wrapping up this first half of your senior season yeah um you know it, it it's always a challenge in the very first of the um half of the season um getting to christmas break if you can get there with i mean last year we got there with one loss if we can get there again with only one loss to emporia this year that would be amazing for us um you know we've got some really great great gac opponents coming up here soon and we just have to keep our focus and keep our main goal of you know at the end of the season we want to be gac regular season champions and if if we want to do that then we can't lose out or lose any games this season you know and especially in this first half of the season so what we're just focusing on right now is taking it game by game and just um, really just want to be every opponent that we can and uh, make it to Christmas. All right, Haley Tucker now, the all-time points leader in Great American Conference history. Congratulations on reaching that mark with still plenty of time to go and to build on your own numbers there. And uh, success to you for the rest of the season. Oh, and thank you so much, Joey, for having me on here. I appreciate you. This has been the GAC Weekly. The GAC Weekly is presented by the Great American Conference. To see and hear more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, please visit oklomasports.net and arkansasports.net and subscribe to the midwestsports.net YouTube channel.